Gentlemen, and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode 297 for the week of February 14th. It's Valentine's Day. And like all true nerds, we are recording a podcast <laughs> while our significant others are off doing whatever they're doing. No, it's all right. We're fine. We're all fine here. My name is Ryan Higgins. Who's here with me this week? Uh, Brox Hager. Charlie West. And Toby's in the back. Toby, sh- shout hello. Toby, yell. Oh. Yeah, that's Toby. He's going to be joining us in a few minutes. He's finishing up something. Uh, we have uh, some spoiler stuff to talk about. End of the episode. We'll get to that uh, kind of in the back half. Uh, so I'll go Batman Legion premiere episode. Uh, Walking Dead mm-hmm. uh, return episode. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But let's get to some comic news first. Everyone loves comic books. Hey, Brock, how excited, uh, how excited are you for uh, Nick Spencer's Secret Empire 10 issue miniseries from Marvel? I mean, they're probably out on time, so it's okay. So I made an offer. <laughs> <laughs> I made an offer on Twitter that I will stand by. So Marvel's coming out with Secret Empire, which uh, nine issues plus a zero issue, so 10 issues. I'm sorry. It says we'll run for nine issues with a zero issue in April, so maybe it's only eight issues. Uh, it starts in. Oh, I'm sorry. I believe that's correct. I believe it's nine issues with a zero issue, so ten, so ten issues. Number zero is in May. There's going to be a free comic book day mm-hmm. issue as well. Uh, there's also a um, – uh, what are they doing? Uh, it, it ends in August. So they're May, June, July, August, four issues. Well, maybe it is only the eighth then because that would make sense, zero to eight. Uh, to a month. So, yeah, they're they're going to haul ass on this thing and try to get it over with. Well, yeah, because they want to hit that September date. Well, yeah, because September is when they're going to want to reboot everything again. We talked about that last week with their uh, you know Marvel rebirth. Um, but it sounds like, uh, yeah, they're going to have a couple different artists, uh, numerous different artists on this title. Now, I said from the date, the initial solicitation date, not any sort of changes or updates or blah, 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 blah. The date they're solicited, if every issue ships on time, whoever is here, when we close the store, the night of the final issue shipping, if no issue has missed a date, I'll take everyone across the street to the bar across the street, and we'll get a drink. So is that Tuesday night or Wednesday night? That'll be Wednesday night. Okay. So, which means we're all going to be dead sober because there is no way in hell Marvel's going to be able to ship a book. An event book without a delay, a delay yeah. because it happens every single time. Well, so I feel pretty confident. You got to get in those this. variant covers, man. I will get no. I will probably get none. Uh, but you know, <clears throat> um, we'll see what they could do. Uh, the cap book I don't think has been kind of on anyone's radar recently. Uh, but Nick Spencer, Steve McNiven, at least you know it's a creative team. And I am curious to see what they're going to do with um, the Secret uh, Secret you know, Secret Empire. Mm. I. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Spencer's Steve Rogers cat book has been decent. It's okay. I mean, it had a, a rough start, but I think that the story has progressed nicely throughout. It's, you know, it does what it does. Um, well, one of the, but, one like, of the, it's, I mean, it's not, it's not like I'm, it's not like Ant-Man or his superior foes where it's like just really good. Um, one of the lines in here says, uh, let me grab it here. Oops, where were we? There we are. It says, uh, Marvel's editor-in-chief Alex Alonzo said, Secret Empire is designed to unify the Marvel Universe's heroes, particularly after the divisive Civil War II and Inhumans vs. X-Men. But you're, you're uniting them against Captain America. That's not really uniting them, I don't think. Uh, I don't know. <coughs> I, don't I mean, know. Uh, it, I think that, well... It starts out being united against Captain America, but there will probably be that shift issue where Cap goes back to non-Hydra Cap. Well, he says, this is not heroes fighting heroes. This is heroes fighting a bad guy. Uh, we saw this as a moment. Uh, we saw this moment as our chance to rally the entire Marvel Universe, which has been fragmented of late. That's putting it mildly. <laughs> fragmented. I... I would love for this to just be the Marvel Universe versus Red Skull with Cap mm-hmm. turning normal within the first five pages. Well, I don't think it would be within the first five pages. But first issue. I'm guessing it would be, if it's ten issues, I'm guessing they would do the turn around issue six. Would be my normal. guess. Mm. I'm, just, I'm just getting 
slight flashbacks of of what was that one with Red Skull and the mutants were fighting him. Axis. Axis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I barely remember that. I don't even remember the plot of that book. <laughs> it was bad. The plot of that book was to be collected in a hardcover that even I can't bring myself to buy. Oh. Yeah, it's so dual shipping. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. Uh, yeah, Stephen McNiven, Andrea Sorrentino, uh, Lionel Yu, and Daniel uh, Acuna are, are the art team. So, mm-hmm. well, you know, those artists can four artists eight issues. Yeah, I, 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 I you know, I can see them. I can yeah. see these guys actually getting it done. Uh, Again, I really, really hope they're able to. I don't know. Um, I would love to see a, a slight more normal Marvel Universe going forward. And if this is the case, then then so be it. I mean, Captain Marvel clearly won't be in it because she is the biggest supervillain in the Marvel Universe right now, perhaps post-Civil uh, War II. The somewhat uh, – Alonzo – let me see. I closed the article here from Comic Book Resources. But Alonzo had a line where he's like, oh, the somewhat defensible positions during Civil War II. I'm like, no, no. I will never disagree with my original statement that Captain Marvel's completely wrong in Civil War II. It, there, is no, there is no shade of gray here. She is wrong in every situation. So – but whatever. Just – just take the last three years of Marvel and just sweep it under the rug. Secret Empire will hopefully get rid of all this. Are you up to date on the Alias book? I've read the first three. They're at five now, right? Yeah, sounds right. I think there's two yeah. I haven't read. <coughs> Something. I, I like the way they're dealing with some of the fallout from Civil War II in that book. Okay. Because there, there was the um, lady that she basically held without any proof even though they couldn't find any proof they wouldn't let her go for a while Mm -hmm. and she's kind of spearheading the first arc of alias where she's kind of taking the fact that acting in the on that knowledge may have created a new organization against super powered beings okay the whole idea of they arrested me without any proof wouldn't let me go and just sounds like yeah there's it, well, i've been reading it and it, it kind of just feels like it's oh look alias is prepping a captain marvel villain instead of having a captain marvel villain in her book well i think they're just trying to get a new organization off the ground that's not aim not mm-hmm. hydra not and the way they're at least initially setting it up making that it's not necessarily going to be we're we're super evil bad guys trying to take over the world it's more like we want to tear heroes down. are out of control yeah. and superpowered beings are out of control and normal people need to take back. But I don't want a story about that. I don't want them to get through it because of a story yeah. arc. I just want it to stop yeah. happening. But like you can I, do I, these things in, uh, in, in doses. I think that's what was so cool about Civil War when it first came out was that it was like, wow, OK, this really I feel – there's a weight well, to this. <clears throat> yeah, Civil War had had it's far from a perfect book, but no, but but Civil War had the 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 event that kicked off this belief, right? It was the 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 New Warriors massacre. Yeah, the um, forget forgot the city was called. Yeah, but, um, right, correct. But you have this event that then brings up this topic. It brings it straight into everybody's you know purview in the Marvel universe. And the thing is, is is I mean it's it's ripped basically from headlines of you know we hear of a school shooting or a mass shooting or something and it's right there in front of us and it brings us up the topic yet again of you know gun control or whatever in civil war it was the case of you know heroes are 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 not, they need to be registered because we need to be monitoring them because they can't be out doing these things because the potential dangers to you know civilians is high um, so that I thought was, it was a, like, it was a great premise and seeing how that premise kind of just seeped into the rest of the Marvel universe with, you know, Fantastic Four and Spider-Man and, you know, all these different characters, they were affected by this whole thought process. Civil War II is basically just, what was the catalyst? There was no real catalyst for there was a catalyst. There was a new inhuman that gave them information that led to a fight with Thanos, which resulted in people dying. But that 
never happened because yeah, they did. stopped it. Yeah, it did. But no, they, they stopped Thanos. Thanos, though. They stopped him, but in the process of stopping him, they put Jennifer Walters in a coma. Yeah. And War Machine and, died, yeah. yeah. And War Machine died. Well, the, the yeah. problem with Civil War is that... Two? No, the first one, uh, is that you can do this, but you can never undo these events. Captain America and Iron Man would never talk to each other again after Civil War. Spider-Man would never... Once he kind of realizes he's betrayed, he would never, ever talk to Iron Man. So you have to kind of... It's an interesting story, but it doesn't work when you have a connected universe because these, you know, yeah, these characters would never interact again. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, one of my favorite things that came out of Civil War was one of the early Straczynski Thor issues where Thor came face to face with Iron Man. Yeah. Like, I, li- I like that sort of fallout of, so you went and cloned me and... But they just kind of brushed that under the rug yeah, after yes, a while. Yes, they did. And that's the problem with these sort of events is the heroes versus hero thing. Yeah. If it's like a slight misunderstanding and they fight for a couple of issues or a couple of pages and then they go off and fight the bad guy, I can deal with that. But but the level at which they have turned on each other in recent years is is yeah mm-hmm. is is irreconcilable. So or unreconcilable, silable, whatever. Um, but Civil War Two, yeah, <clears throat> you know, Secret Empire. Maybe they'll regain some trust during this event, but I don't know. Well, if we did have. Um, any hope for a, a more normal Marvel universe going forward? We have our first, uh, we have kind of our first, fingers crossed, our first hope here. Uh, there's going to be a new ongoing Spider-Man title, Peter Parker. It, it's, I don't know, how, <clears throat> I don't know how they make this work with uh, Amazing Spider-Man, but uh, there's going to be a new title, Spectacular Spider-Man. It's the Remember Spectacular mm-hmm. Spider-Man? That's yeah. a, that's a, that's Peter a, Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man. That's a name that exists. That's a, that's a thing that is okay to go back to. By Chip Zdarsky and Adam Kubert. Uh, he's in New York. He, I don't believe, is a billionaire, trillionaire. I don't know how this is going to work, but it is his more kind of standard uh, 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 group of characters that he interacts with. I, I, I don't know how they're going to make this jive with the Amazing Spider-Man book. but So... I mean, either they're going to do something in the Amazing Spider-Man book that changes things drastically going yeah. forward, or it will just be set in a different time period. But that, if it's set in a different time period, that's pointless. It's it, then The book doesn't matter. I, I assume it's going to be a traditional title. I, nothing that's I read... That's what you want it to be. Nothing I read made it sound like it was a, like a book in the past, or I, I maybe he is still super rich. They're just... Kind of not going to mention it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. But I like Chip Zdarsky, and Adam Kubert's a great artist. So uh, I'll be curious to see what they do with this. And especially if this is sort of... Uh, oh, and they're, they're launching it with one of the uh, Free Comic Day uh, mm-hmm. issues. That's more of the Marvel offering. So fingers crossed if this actually happens, uh, maybe a, a more normal Spider-Man's on his way. Because uh, I know the Dan well, Slott so stuff. It, it, well, yeah. Dan Slott should have stopped writing Spider-Man. Uh, you know, it's wow. funny. I, I, I talked with a bunch of people on Twitter about this earlier today, and I said, you know, I love guys when that big runs on titles, but a lot of times they just it doesn't always work, and and you got to kind of get some new blood in there from time to time and check it up. Um, I, I, the sales on Spider-Man uh, they they go up and down. They're kind of in a down state right now, so it's not like it's the worst that's ever sold under Slot, but. Uh, I don't know. Like, I guess it doesn't matter if it's selling. It doesn't matter. But they really need some new creator on on Spider Man. I think it's time to to let Dan Slott go. It's just not the story is just not working for me. I, I'm 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 slowly making my way through Clone Conspiracy. It is like a chore to read those books. No, it's, they're they're horrible. I thought the pitch is that was okay over this week, or is yeah. it still one more? No, well, it's over. But there's a, there's like an epilogue issue coming. So. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what you get out of doing this. You bring back a couple dead characters that nobody cares about. Maybe, I guess. That's it. But, Brock, we have some good news. Mm-hmm. Charlie, we have some good news. Okay. Dan Jurgens, Yes. Writer on Action Comics. Mm-hmm. He teased something on Twitter the other day that I was really excited about. We don't know what it is. We don't know exactly. But, let me pull up the... Uh, B and G, right? Let me pull in. Don't, 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 uh, don't spoil the surprise. Let me pull up the exact tweet here. It's from Dan Jurgens. He says, Feels good to stretch the drawing muscles again. Won't tell you who, but the character's initials are BG. Yeah. Now, I have to assume it's 
anyone but Booster Gold because <laughs> that's the first person you would think of regardless if he tells you the initials. If he's like, hey, I'm drawing a character, Booster Gold? Like, I mean, that's the first yeah. thing everyone would jump to. Or write, oh, I'm writing, I'm writing a character, well, Booster the, Gold. Who's the other character with those initials? Yeah, no one. Bobcat Goldthwait, that's what someone replied. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, Booster Gold has been missing from the majority of New 52. Uh, he's been missing from because uh, he was there early, but he disappeared pretty. He was early there on. early, vanished, popped up in the All Star Western, Western, and yeah. then vanished again. Yeah. yeah, as far as I know, he hasn't popped up. Well, since he was then. in Convergence. Well, that's true. But he, that's, he did pop into Convergence. He popped into Convergence. Yeah, yeah, but but he hasn't. You, we haven't had a good Booster Gold. Huh. Oh, he was at the tail end of um, See, I mean, Justice League International. Yeah, but right, but I mean, really, yeah. since that, since the whole like the kiss between Superman and and Wonder Woman, that he just he's gone, right? Mm. So and that always that's one of those threads that really kind of bothered me because they made it seem like he was removed, like he's all holy crap, this is going to cause prop and Doctor Manhattan, gone. maybe Doctor Manhattan took him. Yeah, could maybe be. that would uh, make sense. Ah, uh, oh man, so I am, I am. Beyond excited if if uh, maybe if, maybe, maybe um, Doctor Manhattan's going to make him his um, his herald. Well, because you have uh, in the original Crisis on Different Earths, you have the Anti Monitor has he a psycho pirate, mm-hmm. and obviously uh, Pariah who kind of is jumping between the worlds and Flash. Yeah, well, will Doctor Manhattan have like is that why? Because he has. Let's see if he if he has Booster Gold. Let, let's assume he has Booster Gold. He has him. He has the Atom. He has t- uh, Tim Drake. He has Doomsday. He doesn't have Tim Drake. Yeah, yeah, I was getting, but why would that be Doctor Manhattan? I would assume that's somebody else. That's well, Oz but those are the guys. Else. But yeah. but those are the guys that are kidnapping random people that we believe is connected right. somehow <clears throat> to. I mean, Doctor Manhattan yeah. wouldn't need anyone. But what I mean is the Watchmen. Yeah, the Watchmen yeah, characters. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, no, maybe, it would be smart. Maybe he's assembling his own team, a new Watchmen team. Doomsday. I don't know if that would work. Anyway, hopefully we get some new Booster Gold. I'm very excited. I love Booster Gold. He's great. He always deserves to, to pop up more. All I right. Really, I really wish they'd do uh, redo those those the last series of Booster Gold and nice trades. Just go for hardback. The John stuff? Or? Well, they didn't well, the John's it. to Jurgens. Yeah. They didn't finish it in hardcover, though, did they? Well, no. But I'm saying I would love a nice hardback of that. Oh, yeah. I would like my Omnibus. Yeah. I might have the, to just, the Jergens and John. I might run. just have to bind it, and then so no, I'll bind it because then after I bind it, they'll release it. <clears throat> yeah. Of course, of course. That's one of the few. So they haven't done an omnibus of the Barry Flash by John yet, and they haven't done one for Booster Gold. Is there any? I'm trying to think of any other longer runs that they're missing. In do they do Titans yet? Yeah, they did the all of it. Yeah. Okay. That was one of the early ones they released, omnibus wise. Yeah. Toby, you ready to talk? Are you still watching? No. Toby literally is finishing up Legion right now, <laughs> so we can either uh, we can talk Legion or Lego Batman. We can talk Walking Dead first. We can talk Walking Dead first because <laughs> this is spoiler time. Yeah, for anyone, if you don't want to be spoiled about any of this stuff, we're going to talk some TV movie stuff here for a little bit. Uh, so yeah, Walking Dead premiere. Spoilers, uh, Legion, and and uh, yeah, mid season premiere, and, and like a Batman movie. So uh, you may want to fast forward about half an hour or so if you don't want to hear any of that stuff. But yeah, Walking Dead. Let's go with that real quick. Uh, it, was, it was Walking Dead. Walking Dead's yeah. back. Always good. Yeah, I like the fact that it kind of progressed things fairly well with. Mm-hmm. But who was the other group? Like. Ryan um, asked me the same question. There's a lot of who's, questions. Who's the other yeah. group? And I, I think that <clears throat> I because I don't think the the group was in the comic books, but I think that um, I think that it's they because they're not getting the bodies from the kingdom. They need cannon fodder. Well, and they're so, not getting the bodies from the kingdom yet, but yeah, I mean this. Um, but they're you know I think that that they're. I mean, I think they're just taking a different angle and maybe improving their odds with another group. Um, because, I mean, in the comic books, it takes a while for them to... Uh, well, I mean, they laid the groundwork with the herd. Yeah. Even though that was very 
happenstance more so than I was expecting. I love them driving, uh, driving oh, the zombies yeah. with that, like barbed wire, or whatever, and just ripping the zombies in half. That was great. Yeah, <laughs> they were just mowing the lawn. It just man. made me go. They should just keep cars like that on hand. Yeah, and yeah, anywhere they is. set up, it's just yeah. like, oh, we have to go thin out a herd. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm just surprised there's not more like Mad Max like vehicles with spikes. Uh, and, like, <laughs> well, I know a lot of people miss that. There's um, when the priest guy is driving away at the very beginning when he's leaving. Um, what's his face, Gabriel? Um, there was someone in the car with him that you just kind of see pop, like a head sort of pops up as he's driving away. So, who's hitching a ride? I think it's the 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 because the in the episode before there was that hooded guy with the binoculars. I don't remember. I don't know, it's been it's, a long time. Well, it's at the tail end. You have to watch through the credits. Okay. Um, and it's somebody that's just because he's watching a Gabriel on the fence at the end of the episode, hmm. and then it's I don't remember that at and all. And then it's basically you see you from see, the finale from the hmm. f- from the mid season finale. I don't so, okay, that at all. so they went to the boat, raided the <laughs> boat. They made it seem like the guy from the boat was dead. The guy from but, the boat's dead, but this guy is part of the the group because I think that's where because that, that's yeah. where because the thing is is I think that's where uh, that's why Gabriel's at the end of the episode with the group. So the hooded kid is is or the hooded person with the weird with the because they they focus on the boots. Mm-hmm. So I think it'll be more clear in the next episode. But, yeah, um, I think it was just because. Because it was he left the car running while he went to close the door back up, somebody could have easily gotten back in the yeah. back in the car, yeah. and that guy was already hanging around watching him. So, yeah. I need to have you order the latest Walking Dead slip case just so I can catch up. <laughs> <laughs> For all I know, it's we know who that group is, and I just haven't read I, up to. Well, the to, funny thing is, is I during I read all the all out all because we're leading yeah. it all out war. And I've read all that stuff, but I don't remember this extra group in there. Yeah. And I think that, I think that again, I think it's just because I don't think they necessarily have time to expand the kingdom just yet. Like, learn more characters from the kingdom and, like, introduce more characters. Well, but <sighs> spoilers for the Walking Dead comic book. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn dies. Well, no. The, there's the whole thing with the king and the tiger and yeah. like that's to me pivotal stuff that if they're gonna go to the all-out war and everything you have to have the kingdom involved mm. they can't sit on the sidelines something's going to change it so the kingdom is involved and they've already made it clear the kingdom has plenty of people even if they haven't shown all the people mm-hmm. so having another group while well, i think gives them a way to sort of stretch out the story Wait, isn't it isn't it the kingdom Alexandria the hilltop versus the saviors? Yeah, that's why it's supposed to be. Yeah, and now they're adding yeah. another group to the TV this, show. This group, which... does, this group seems to be like um, like teenagers, like young adults. You know, younger. It, it seems like it's more of eh? yeah. I thought it was just a regular group of people. Maybe this is the kingdom's like army. Maybe they're just out doing stuff, and and they're gonna come across them. Because they, they, it sounds like some of the people in the kingdom want to help, but they don't know. Or the, on the hilltop, they want to help, but they don't really have the training for it. And the kingdom, they're like, no, we're not going to get involved. We'll, but we'll maybe find, this, we'll, maybe these, we'll maybe find this out next episode. That. Yeah, so. well, or maybe, maybe. Yeah, Walking Dead. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess if you're watching this far and you're still watching Walking Dead, I, I just don't know what to the, say. The, the episode, I, I think the episode, like Charlie said, did a great job of of kind of tying, bringing a lot of information, getting you up to speed on a lot of different characters um, and a lot of what's going on and stuff like that. Um, because also you're catching up the characters in the show to what's going on. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think that this was a good episode. Well, that's actually. usually how these, these episodes have to go um, when they come back. Yeah, so... I mean, I enjoyed it. I mean, nobody dies, so <laughs> <laughs> that's always a that's always a good sign. Bit of a break from the norm. Yeah, you know. So a long time ago, I watched like a YouTube video or something on like all the people who have died on The Walking Dead, and it counted like the walkers and like the people, and just like had a tally. So as they were driving with the car, I was just <laughs> seeing that like in my head that tally just went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, let's talk about Legion here for a bit because I think I have a lot to say about that. Uh, so if you're not familiar, Legion is a new TV show based on the character Legion from the X-Men uh, universe, Professor X's son. Uh, Bridges that came out in the New Mutants, one of the Chris Claremont, um, uh, Bil- Bilsakevich run during that, that era, uh, made famous in the comics during Age of Apocalypse or, or setting Prior, off. Kicking setting off. Yeah. Kicking off Age of Legion's, Apocalypse. Legion's quest led into Age of Apocalypse. Yeah, but yeah. by killing Professor X. Uh, more recently... Uh, became infamous among the Comic Conspiracy podcast crew for a uh, absolutely abysmal run uh, by Cy Spurrier at Marvel Comics, uh, which I, the series is supposed to be loosely based off. Um, this is running on FX. I think the premiere was an hour and a half. I think it's going to be an hour. I believe it's eight episodes. And I didn't realize this until it, until I was watching it. The, the, the showrunner was Noah Hawley, who was the showrunner of Fargo, one of my absolute favorite shows from the last couple of years on FX. I had no idea that he was involved with this. I I kind of wasn't paying attention. I, I knew I was going to watch it, so I didn't watch really any of the trailers or, or see much about it. So uh, let's, let's, before we get too deep into this episode, let's get a couple things out of the way here first. This show has absolutely nothing to do with the character Legion, short of his name, has nothing to do with the X-Men, We'll never have anything to do with the X-Men. That is not Mojo. That is not the Shadow King. It'll, they will never say the word mutant again, probably. They said it once during the episode. That is literally all we'll ever get. This has absolutely nothing to do with the They're X-Men. They're going to say mutant at least one more time. Uh, okay, maybe once more. Because they haven't really explained to him what he is yet. Okay, sure. Maybe they'll explain it to him one more time. <laughs> but but I do want to get this out of the way before we get too far into this. That this has absolutely nothing to do with the comic books. And I... I how, how do you know? Uh, because I watched the episode. It ha- it, I, I, there's a possibility that it will. I think it's highly unlikely. I mean, this could just be the X Men, the X Men's version of the Truman Show. Okay, it's not. Uh, I, I just don't believe for a second that this will have any connection to the X Men at all. Maybe some weird forced like Hugh Jackman cameo in the finale of the show or something like that in a couple no, of years. Uh- I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, it has nothing to do with the X Men. Now, let's just get that out. Of no, the way. at this point, the only way it would end up having anything to do with the X Men is if it turned out to be a huge hit and they wanted to try and cash in on yeah. the success of the show with sure. other things. Yeah. But sure. getting that out of the way, the show's fantastic. The show, the show's incredible. Like, uh, there's no no question in my mind that this is a great. I mean, that opening pilot was was amazing. Yeah, one of the most cool stylized shows I've ever seen in my life. It has a lot of obviously. I see a lot of David Lynch influence in this. Um, it is a. It is a. I, I think actually, uh, and Charlie, Toby, I know you guys watch it. Maybe you guys will agree or not. I don't know. But I, I actually felt the one kind of bad part of the show was the big action scene at the end. Yeah. The the powers, while I understand what they were going for, did not have a budget to look no. good at all. Which is, which is weird because the rest of the show looked fantastic. Oh, when they were dealing with his powers, oh my. Yeah. They did an amazing job on that part. But yeah, when, when it came to the, we have to fling people various directions. It and, looked really it just, bad. Yeah. I mean, maybe it was, okay, look, there's a character in the show. That, that is sort of this inner demon that he's fighting against. It literally looks like a big, ugly blob guy, right? And people are like, oh my god, it's Mojo. Okay, no, it's not, it's not fucking Mojo, right? It may look a little bit like Mojo, I'm not going to lie, but it's not. It's some inner demon thing that he's... It's literally like a multiple personality could, could thing that he's fighting Man? against. No. I would k- kill someone <laughs> if it was Sugar Man. Um... <laughs> So it's again. It's cool. You know, I would love to see Ryan's reaction if, like, the first appearance of Sugar Man <sighs> turned into like a seventy dollar comic overnight. Burn it. <laughs> uh, so, he, he, so it's a guy named Dan Stevens, the actor uh, playing David Haller. So again, the one thing that actually is real—that's the character's name, David Haller. Uh, so he's he's in an insane asylum. 
you're never quite sure what's real, what's not. Just the way the show is going back and forth uh, as he's figuring out exactly where he is and what's going on. And you kind of meet parts of his family. And he ends up falling, uh, falling in love with one of the patients. And uh, towards the end, is kind of rescued out of this asylum. Uh, there was like kind of well, – there was another group that took him. Rescued from a – what seemed like a different asylum. Yeah. Well, he was in the asylum. Then he gets – taken out and another group put him in uh, almost like a basically like a jail that this big giant building that we don't really know what's going on there uh some abandoned building thing and gets rescued there by not professor x female not professor x yeah i when we got to that scene, Cassandra I'm like, Nova. if that turns into Cassandra yeah. Nova I'm done <laughs> <laughs> no if it turned into Cassandra Nova I'd be like awesome Okay, now it's about the X Men. Yeah, but if it turned into Cassandra Nova, I'd be sitting there going, "It." What does that have to? Do? Yeah. Uh-uh. If you can't bring in Xavier, if you can't bring in everything that that character kind of yeah. was significant in doing, sure, sure, it, it just becomes well, a well, very because if Cassandra new- comes in, then that can introduce what's his name. Well, she's not Cassandra Nova, so I just no. But who's the character that you love from Morrison's Run? Which one? I like lots of characters from Morrison. They're talking about Choir? Choir. Quentin Choir? Yeah, no, there's no Quentin Choir in the show. What if they introduced They Quentin could, Quire though. Here? Oh, but they could introduce anything, but that's what we're getting back to. So none of the characters' names are anything. <laughs> well, no, but what I'm saying is I could see them using Quentin Choir in the show versus the movies. Like, Oh, I could, uh, too, I could, but they're not going to. Is, I, I is, think he's a I'm character saying. that would fit the show very well. Yeah. Uh, but I, I thought the show was great. Uh, Charlie, Toby? I went in expecting to sort of hate it because of the legacy comic. Once I heard it wasn't based on that, it kind of jumped up my priority list. And yeah, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I'm The whole premise, though, I really hope they have a good hook for episode two. Or at least within like the first couple episodes. Because I don't know where they take this show. And if it's just going to sort of – this show, as it is right now, makes a fantastic TV movie or something like that to me. Does not make a full-on series that works unless they have a good hook of where they take it from here. It could be like Fargo. It could be eight-episode, single-story, then you move on to another story. I, I don't, Which could work really well. And yeah. I, can't, I can't wait to see where they go, but – Based on the way it ended, I don't really have a firm grasp of what the show's going to become right now. Well, at least the start, I feel like it's him with these people trying to probably find more of their kind, right? And and so it's like they're forming the new mutants. It's like they're forming the X Men, right? Or the right. new mutants. Or sure, but they're not. I mean, and that's Generation the thing. X. There are none of them are are characters, and and even he, even Legion is. I mean, they don't call him Legion ever, and and he barely is the same character i don't get any relation uh in this to to a connection to professor x uh or or myra mctaggart or um, i forget the lady i forget his actual mom's name i forget what her name is but he was raised under myra mctaggart Uh, i don't get any connection to any of the people that he's with being any actual x-men characters not even super obscure ones to the best of my knowledge they're not and I, i i tried to do a little research and look at these characters names and when some like you, oh, Easter eggs from Legion. And it's like, yeah, there are none. They say the word mutant once. That's it. It's totally original other than that. So, Toby, you kind of polish us off right before we started recording. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I expect it more because everybody is talking so much uh, stuff about it, saying how great it was. And it's all right. Uh, it's not your thing. Eh? I don't think so. It's a little 70s. It feels a little 70s ish. Well, it's very time agnostic. Yeah, they look like they're in the seventies, but he's got like some future tech computer thing. It, at the it end. All feels like a seventies movie, though, with the dialogue and the, the pacing. Uh, um, they, I know it's all right. I'll, I'll I'll keep watching. I uh, you know I don't know I don't know what to say about it. I kept thinking that the uh, the other guy that's sitting in the room with him was uh, Jason Stryker the entire time. <laughs> So I actually looked it up, but it's not him. No, or, yeah, it's, it's at no least one. not the actor because the actor kind of was. I uh, like I haven't seen X Men two in a long time, so I kept thinking it was Jason Stryker. But uh, yeah, I don't know. 
I feel like my favorite, one of my favorite parts of the show were the times where they sort of hinted around powers but didn't actually come out and show them. When, she's in, when he's in the pool and she like evaporates the hell out of everyone, mm. but you don't actually see it happening, right? And that worked well. And that worked really well. Yeah. The, the way they can kind of hide the effects. Or when he's in the kitchen and he makes everything explode and it kind of does that like freeze frame as sort of all the stuff's going around him. But you don't really see... No, well, because we don't know what's real and what's not. Right, right, exactly. We really don't because the girl could be rogue for all we know. <laughs> yeah. Well, right? Could be. Yeah, I mean, they kind of play he, That's what that. he sees. It doesn't mean that's what really is there, so... I mean, yeah. a girl that doesn't want skin to be touched, I could be rogue. I'm not, well, was, I don't think it, it is. It's definitely based on rogue. Yeah, I mean, but, I don't think it is, but, yeah. you know, I see rogue in her. Uh, you know what? Maybe someone that has more knowledge about the show can, can let me know, or maybe I'll do a little research before the next episode. Uh, I feel like this was something else, and then they said, hey, we have the X-Men license. Let's throw the X-Men on, like the Masters of the Universe? Maybe. I kind of wonder if that's how this show got started. Huh. It wouldn't surprise me because it, 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 why I, connect it to the X-Men if you're not going to do anything with it? I, you know, I, I do like the take on it, though. It's like a guy that's a mutant who doesn't know he's a mutant. It's almost like a story from his point of view. Without yeah. like, it's, like Everything we've watched at this point, everything we've read, it's like, you, you, it's laid out for you. There's the mutants versus the fucking humans, and yeah. they don't like each other, blah, blah, blah. It's It's laid out, right? And the mutants know when they're mutants. When like when their powers start, they just know. Yeah. So I I feel like this this is a good take where the guy doesn't know he's a mutant. Like he has no idea. Right. Like, right. The right. People watching him do, but yeah. he doesn't. Right. Yeah. So I kind of kind of like to see. That, I feel that's a good original idea to go as a take yeah. on it. Like, yeah. hey, there's a mutant and he's the most powerful. And he doesn't even know it. He doesn't that, know what's going on. He doesn't even right. know that he's a mutant. Right. Right. So, well, if it's like the original Legion, his powers are almost limitless like yeah and uh, at one point they kind of played around with the different powers per personality that yeah. he had and yeah. well that's I mean, what i i kind of almost wonder if the end of the show is going to be hey all those people none of them exist they're all as multiple personalities that girl one that, of his personalities mm-hmm. that was something i kept thinking they were gonna do yeah yeah well because in the in the size superior legacy book um X Men Legacy, because that's what the title is. Um, when you're in when when you're in his because in the book they they go like into his brain like yeah. it's this huge collection of of it's almost like an insane asylum in his mind. Right, right, right. And the dangerous the dangerous personalities, the dangerous powered mutants are locked away. And trying to get out, and every it's everyone else is just kind of there, and he interacts with all of these kind of different yeah. personalities. Right. And so, I mean, it was a it was a really interesting concept. It was just written really badly. Um, but again, like if they kind of take it as if this is all going on in his, you know, it's all a lot of this is going on in his head. What is real? What is not? Mm-hmm. Then that does give them a, the ability to branch out and do more. Um, I mean, I didn't get a chance to watch the episode because um, I don't get FX. Um, but uh, I mean, it, from what everyone said, I'm, I'm going to try and check it out. If yeah, I can. yeah, so we're checking it out. Also, uh, I like Aubrey Plaza. I'm sad she's only in a couple episodes. It is her. Yeah, okay, okay. yeah, she's her I was friend. Like, it looks like her. I was like, yeah, I didn't yeah, bother yeah. looking anything up yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's her friend in the. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, so here's my kind of low down on Legion. If you just like good things. You should absolutely watch this, but if you are looking for a comic book show, it's not. Uh, it, it's 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 not at all. So that shouldn't deter you from watching it. Just no going in that has nothing to do with the X Men or comic books. Right now, yeah, so far, um, I did get the chance to see the second episode of Powerless. Not I'm going to try to compare the two, but Powerless is a bad show. However, if you just want to hear them say, you know. The Flash, you'll get that, right? Because they acknowledge the comic books. This does not acknowledge anything. They say the word mutant once, so just be aware going in. But don't don't let that neg- uh, that negativity stop you because you absolutely should watch this. I think it's really good. Hey, Charlie. I was just going to say I enjoy Powerless so far. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I acknowledge completely it's not a great show, but I don't watch that many comedies because most comedies I can't stand. <laughs> so 
the most offensive part of the second episode was when they said that Sinestro trapped the Flash in the Phantom Zone and he was going to be gone for like a year. It's like this Mad Libs DC TV <laughs> show. It's like, well, we're just going to put characters in. It doesn't matter that it doesn't matter the Sinestro and the Flash fought and they trapped him in the Phantom Zone. How do they even know he trapped him in the Phantom Zone? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Somebody why tweeted it. Oh, how would Sinestro be fighting the Flash? Sinestro tweeted it. Okay. Wait, Sinestro has a Twitter account? He of should. course he does. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this is what I did today. And I'm about to get coffee. Well, let's talk. Uh, let's move on. Acrylotopic. Talking joke. about Phantom Zones. Yeah, sp- yeah speaking of Phantom Zone, uh, something a little less serious, but... Well, maybe so much more serious. Well, pretty dark, yeah. Uh, Lego Batman. I know me, Charlie. I'm going to step out for this one. Okay. I, w- I, I was going to go with my son on Thursday, but I had a... There's no... I mean, okay. A parenting bucket list check off that, sure. that happens. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like you could spoil too much in this, but uh, it well, is I'm definitely a... a um, uh, a who's who of of incredible actors, incredible cameos. Uh, I, I did have a few people tell me that I will absolutely love the first ten minutes, and I was not let down. The first ten minutes might be the greatest ten minutes in movie history. Just the endless list of of supervillains. Yes. Now I only did. Which my wife asked me, "Are those all real?" And I'm like, "Yes, yes, what? they all." So once the list started. And it started going faster and faster. My brain was like, okay, brain, let's do this. Do you know who these characters all are? The only one I didn't know was Eraser. And he's just an old-ass Batman villain. I don't know that he's appeared in 50 years, but he is a real character. He's the only one that I was like, wait, okay. It's like, Batman, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Riddler, Scarecrow, Two-Face, Poison Ivy, yep, okay, of course I know all them. And they start going down the list, and they start going a little faster and more obscure, and like Kite Man, and like... Uh, like, like Crazy Quilt and, and Condiment, and Condiment King. King, of course. Condiment King gets a lot of play in this movie. And I was like, all right, all right, all right. And I was like, Eraser? I'm like, I don't know Eraser. But then I kept going with the list. And I'm like, yep, yeah, I know them all, except for Eraser. I, so, like they suggested, I had to Google Eraser when that went, when that, I got out of the movie. So, what a fucking hilarious movie. What an absolutely hilarious movie. I was legitimately surprised at when they sort of brought in the Phantom Zone, I'm like, so they're just gonna like unleash all of Superman's villains I kinda, in this too? Yeah, I kind of thought that. No, uh, and, that and was then, so much more genius. And, and then Real it just quick. went, nope, nope. We were very successful doing this with the Lego movie. <laughs> So well, we're going to do this also with the Lego Batman movie. Yeah, real quick plot here. Uh, so Batman, played by Will Arnett, uh, Lego Batman, obviously very sad and angry and, you know, but he sees the most rockinest, most kick-ass superhero of all time and everyone loves him until he comes home and he's the only one around and he's watching a bunch of sad romantic comedies by himself. And, um, uh, of course, the people around him, uh, Barbara Gordon, uh, they introduced uh, Dick Grayson a little bit into it. Uh, they all sort of like try to say, hey, you know, you need to kind of t- take us into your life as well. Barbara Gordon, she's the new commissioner replacing com- – replacing, um, which they kind of play up like that he has the hots for Barbara at the beginning. Yeah. They kind of pull- he needs to stop that. Yeah, but they kind of pull away from that. Well, they need to stop that. Bruce Tim, stay away from this. Paul Dini, stay away. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Alfred and Barbara and Dick, you know, they all kind of – as they befriend – um, um, because he's the commissioner in uh, Batman Beyond. Yeah, yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, which I like. I think that's yeah. great. Yeah, and that's in great. that one, she also had a thing with Batman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's from the much the older, older series. They just kind of acknowledge the fact that they that had they that. had the little. So the the one person that realizes that you know uh, over all of them that realizes that Batman needs someone in his life is the Joker. Mm-hmm. So much like the Scott Snyder run on Batman, where the Joker's like, "Hey, I'm like your BFF. I'm your lover. You need me, right?" Obviously, a, a slightly less creepy way in this, but um, or more, or more. But Joker is like, "Yeah, I'm gonna. I want to make you happy, right?" And <laughs> and so as as a series of kind of tricks, he ends up <clears throat> getting the Phantom Zone projector. Because Superman, you know, Superman's a cool dude and saves the whole world. And ends up releasing just all the villains in the Phantom Zone. Lego owns. 
<laughs> into from the well, Lego universe into Lego Gotham, Shared right? Universe. And so, like yeah. Charlie said, like we were, we were hinting before, it's not you know Zod and well, I mean, they start Bayora out by saying and, Zod got sent to the, and then they don't even yeah. show Zod, it's like not, not, not Brainiac or anything like that. So, I'll come. The second I saw the Gremlins, Toby, oh. I, I thought of you, and I yeah. was like, they oh. even called them the eighties monsters. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, the British si- the British, the British robots, robots. Ask your. <laughs> So, yeah, the British robots, ask your nerd friends. Uh, uh, which, so, I believe Warner Brothers is, is the distributor for Doctor Who in America. Is that correct? But but they don't yeah. know, since they don't own the rights, they couldn't actually call them the Daleks. Oh, I'm sure they could have called them the Daleks. Then I mean, why, pretty much all, and this was one of the things that well, I found. Well, they never called the Gremlins the Gremlins. They, well, did. But, they but, did once. Did they? They did once. Here's the thing yep. that amused me about this movie. There are two, there were, there it was pretty much... An advertisement, in my opinion, for Lego Dimensions, Lego Dimensions yeah. like second, re- like well, there, the two point release. There, there are three things they didn't say by name. They didn't say the Daleks. They didn't say Godzilla, and they didn't say which. I mean, that kind of wasn't Godzilla either. Yeah, yeah I don't of, think that was Godzilla. I think that was um, it, it wasn't anything, but it was. It seemed like it kind of was maybe supposed to be Godzilla, and they well, did. Kind of reminded me of like the creature from the the Black Lagoon, Black Lagoon yeah, or something like that. Um, I don't. Did they say Agent Smith? No. Because Agent Smith no, was didn't. there. Yeah. But I don't think they ever actually call him it by name. It would have been funny if they kept going and had Marvel people show up in the DC movie. Well, Marvel <laughs> gets a name drop in this. <laughs> yeah. I am now going to change all my passwords. I'm not actually, but I'm uh, now yeah. going to change all my passwords to Iron Man sucks. Because that's the password to the Bat Cave and, yeah. and the Bat Computer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Bat Computer. So it's the same universe like I always wanted it to be. So let's actually, uh, yeah, so, uh, well, who else was in there? Um, Sauron was in there. Yes. Um, uh, 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 what's his face from Harry Potter? Um, oh, Voldemort. Voldemort. Uh, it was just, it was so Gremlings are the funny best. to see all these yeah. things. I mean, Gremlings and Daleks in the same thing. I'm like, yeah. yes, all right, I can die happy. I need to go to IMDb still, don't I? I wanted to confirm who they had voiced the Daleks if they got Nicholas Briggs or not. Well, I am actually going to go uh, uh, over the list here with you because I don't actually I, – I don't obviously know every one of these actors. So so feel free to go over the list and, and, and add in here if there's someone um, that I missed. But uh, the people they have in this movie – and some of these people literally have one line. But it's an, it is the most amazing cast of all time. Well, the guy who played Harvey Dent – in Batman, yeah, yeah, Billy is, Williams is Two Face yeah. in this one. So, so Will the Arnett Michael was Batman. Keaton one. Yeah, that's yep. why he's black as a Lego in right, this one. Right, right, right. <laughs> so Will Arnett was Batman. Michael Sarah was Robin. Rosie O'Dawson is Batgirl. Um, Rosario. Uh, what is it? Rosie. Did I say Rosie? Yeah, or sounded like it? I think I just sort of slurred my word oh, together. Rosario Dawson is Batgirl. Uh, Ray Fiennes is, is Alfred. Siri is the computer. Yeah, which is amazing. <laughs> that was hilarious. Zach Galifianakis is the Joker. Uh, Jenny it. Slate, I don't know her, but she's Harley Quinn. I'm not sure what else she was in. Oh. Uh, Conan O'Brien was a Riddler. That was great. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I'm not familiar with the, with the guy that played Bane. His name is Doug Benson. I kind of looked but he him did, up. He did the uh, Tom Hardy Bane. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I laughed every time he talked. It was so funny. Yeah. Uh, Billy D. Williams was Two-Face. Um, Eddie Izzard was Voldemort. Seth Green was King Kong. Wait, Eddie Izzard? Yeah, yeah, he was wow. Voldemort. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Wow. Channing Tatum was Superman. Jonah Hill was Green Lantern. Uh, I'm gonna kind of just skim through. Uh, Mariah Carey was the mayor, which is the weirdest. I don't yeah. know how they they got they got that. That's so freaking weird. It's called Mariah Carey called the office. She wants a part. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Ralph Garman and Chris Hardwick were some of the reporters. They're two kind of nerd. I mean, everyone knows Chris Hardwick. Yeah. Ralph Garman's... The Kevin Smith guy. Kevin Smith's one, one of his buddies, yeah. Um, I don't... Yeah, I don't see... The Daleks, at least, aren't listed on the IMDb page, mm. so I don't know... I mean, they sounded exactly like the Daleks, so <laughs> I I don't know who else they would have got to actually do the voice, or if they just took stuff from... Yeah, I don't know. The show, but... I was but, curious, though. But, but I'm correct, right? Warner Brothers distributes... Warner Brothers distributes Doctor Who. They got the rights, um, Lego wise. They got the rights to do like the Doctor Who levels and got all the right voices for the Lego Dimensions okay. game. And like they've produced Doctor Who Lego sets. So, 
<laughs> so rights wise, I, I'm not really. Yeah, not sure what. I, I'm sure they could have called them Daleks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was just much funnier too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, Brock's back. I won't. Uh, we won't jump with too many big spoilers here. Not that again. Not that there's a lot to spoil, but it's a pretty straightforward movie. Yeah, yeah. It is hilarious, and especially for all those people out there, if you hate Batman v Superman and you hate Man of Steel. Mm. Hate Suicide Squad. And you hate Suicide Squad. Did you, you catch that one that they said? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so what you're saying is Bryce will love this movie. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh everyone will love this movie. Oh and I Brock, sorry I do 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 have one more thing to say. One of my absolute favorite parts of the movie. There's there's two times where they do that where they talk about his various adventures in the past. Yes. And they show all the clips from the old movies and the TV yeah. show and the anime, and they have like the poster from the animated well, they series. And, Legoized yeah. some of it. Yeah, yeah. They, but they had they had a, they had a strange amount of yeah. actual live action yeah. footage in this movie yeah. from other movies yeah. and from other Batman uh, TV stuff. So, uh, yeah, the only way it could have been better if uh, A Team and Night Rider showed up too, <laughs> because they are in Lego dimensions. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I will take a weekly series of this anytime over Powerless. No, oh, oh, flat so out. Full, of course. <laughs> I'm actually surprised because I know Ninjago has been a huge hit, and that that they've done. That's getting movie too. Right, that looks yeah. awesome too. Have they only done? Is that on the air anymore? Didn't they do? I thought they did a Star Wars one too. Were they all? Uh, as far as I know, they've. Was I there weekly still... episodes, or were they just special movies? Oh no, they were weekly episodes, and they went. Ninjago is one of those properties where they just kind of reinvented every once in a while. Yeah. Because they can sell more Legos that way. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if DC decides that they only want Teen Titans Go and they don't want to kind of have another more kind of kid-heavy DC show, if they end Teen Titans Go in a year or two, which, which they probably will because it's been on for a few years now, uh, they have to do a, a DC Lego TV well, show. they've done all those direct-to-video. Yeah, yeah, yeah or, right. And I mean, all those are really good, too. But I mean, like a 15-minute a yeah. weekly episode would be just incredible the first, the first time the 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 depth they go on the characters in this is is just incredible and uh yeah it's so funny and it's, there's a lot of historical nods in there yeah like a lot, a lot. they yeah. like the, oh, whoever wrote it either really knows comic books unless jeff johns oh does, sure 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 or or uh they made did the research well you know a movie's great because we went on Sunday afternoon and it was about like half kids, half adults, right? It was a, it was a lot of families. Want to hear something incredibly weird? Yeah. When I went to see it, me and my family were the only ones in the theater. We watched it with a completely empty theater. Really? Us. Yes. Well, that was today, right? Or yesterday, right? That was yesterday at wow. like 4.30. <laughs> yeah, well, we went. The theater was packed. It was full. Um, it was half families... Maybe three quarters families, kids and adults, but there was definitely a, a group, you know, five guys all sitting in a row watching this, you know, like a bunch of adults all sitting <laughs> in a row awesome. to watch it, including me and Leanne. Yeah. Um, and what I loved about this so much is the, when you get movies like this where the kids are laughing and making, you know, they're kind of poking fun of the action and they, they laugh oh. at the action. But there are so many great adult jokes in this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, and there are a lot of them. There was there. a lot. So I would hear the adults all La laughing. Yeah. And the kids are like, <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. Like, a lot of, again, again, if you're into 80s stuff, a lot of 80s references yeah. in this movie. Yeah, a lot. Uh, a lot of 80s, I really a lot of 80s music references yeah, in this movie, too. I really laughed when, um, because the kids are really into it. Yeah. And then you know how we're like, I'm Batman, Batman. And the whole like theater went quiet, and some kid. I'm Batman. And I, like, he just got too amped up, and he was like, I'm Batman. And the whole theater laughed at that. It was really cute. It was great. so awesome. Great. Yeah, there were definitely a few that's absolutely laugh out loud moments for me. So, yeah, I cannot recommend this movie enough. It's totally worth seeing. Uh, we have a question here, and of course, one of the first ones he got was from uh, Hiram. He says, Was Lego Batman better than the DC, uh, D the DC uh, movies? And look, they're yes. different. They're different. Yes. It, I don't. Yes, it was. Okay, look. <laughs> Lego Batman was great, right? Do I want an ongoing Lego cinematic DC universe where Absolutely. this is the only interpretation of the characters? Absolutely. No, of course I want a more normal. Wait, well, no, I want this to have its own universe. Oh, of movie, course. And then yeah. they can have the regular movie. No, they should. They absolutely should do a DC 
movies, but not. Uh, but again, I, I want both. I like the fact that DC can do both and do it well. Mm. Marvel, they kill on their movies, but man, their TV and their and their animated stuff is so bad. And especially with Dis- being with Disney, I don't know how that's. I don't know how that's possible. Warner Brothers has done good TV in the past, but Disney's like mastered TV in the last thirty the last thirty years or so. With their animated series and their and, and and all the stuff on ABC, it baffles me that Marvel's so bad at the television stuff still. But I, uh, yeah, I, I I cannot wait to see if they do more of this. But I also want Wonder Woman and Justice League and mm-hmm. and Batman. Don't worry, so. we'll get them. All right, next question. We have a couple of questions that were not comic related, but that's okay. We'll answer those too. Our good friend Casey, he asks, um, he just started a new job and it sucks. Well, I'm sorry. What has been your worst job ever? I'm going to fire anyone that says this job because we all know that's a lie. I've been lucky. I haven't had too many awful jobs. I've had jobs that I like less than others. Uh, Surprisingly enough, I actually didn't mind working at Blockbuster. I worked there for a year. It wasn't a bad job. I had a lot of fun there. It got very busy. I hated kind of the customers, but you hate customers in every job. But, (laughs) But it was a... It was fun at times, and, and, and what I loved about Blockbuster 2 is, I ain't give a fuck. I took every movie I could get. I watched a lifetime of movies in the year I worked there because I would just take home three movies every shift and just watch, watch movies and TV all night long whenever I, whenever I got off work. So uh, I, it definitely wasn't a so, great job. So I have a question. How has that changed? But I, oh, God, I can't watch anything anymore. I don't have time. Uh, but but yeah, obviously that's kind of my general shit job. I've I've been pretty lucky with my jobs. So for me, this probably actually is sort of a two part answer because when I first started working for a particular company that I will not name, um, I don't even know if they're still around. But when I first started working there, everything was kind of fine. It was just a like part time after school job. It, would go in, do my thing. And then they brought me on like full time over the summer to work on a particular project. And I was miserable and I don't, I didn't expect to be miserable at the time, but a large part of it kind of had to do with the fact that I was the only one quote unquote working there hourly. There were other people who kind of got started and it was kind of more like corporate job or more retail or no, it was, it was working at a, um, I mean, company that was trying to convert some software that they had that was sort of DOS based to like a Windows based application. Okay. So I was doing some of that work for them, but the to me the reason why I was miserable just had to do with the way I was treated at the time because like the owner of the company would come in and everybody else in the office would like leave with him to go get Starbucks except me because I was the only So I would literally, they'd all leave. I'd take out my book, read my book. When they get back, I'd sit down my book, get back to work. But it. That's weird. It it was just one of those things of. Like, could you not go? Basically, I could not go because I. And that was for me one of those things where it's like, it's very, very particular to me that people feel valued at their job. Yeah, sure. And being the only one sort of left out because you happen to be working full time, just like everybody else, but technically not be on quote unquote salary. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bothered the crap out of me. And I was so miserable there. <laughs> Less miserable now. Yeah. Toby, bro. Uh, I guess I have two that are kind of tied. Uh, my first job out of high school, I did oil change. Um, it was okay, except just the environment was just. It wasn't. You might look like a like a garage type of guy, but you're not. I, I mean, I can <laughs> I can change oil. Like sure, it's not sure. it's not something I can't do. But it just like it just wasn't a good environment. It 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 wasn't like I I didn't feel like valued or anything or any of that stuff. Um, and then another job I had, I I refilled the uh, CO two canisters, um, like you would for soda machines and stuff. Um, at this place around here that services basically all of the Bay area. Um, that job was just kind of, it, it just, it was like, I did my own thing, but it just was like, I came in, I filled these things. I helped around out around the, the shop, the, the warehouse, but just wasn't fulfilling at all. 
So, yeah. I mean, I haven't had any really bad jobs. I've had stressful jobs, but not yeah. not like horrible jobs. Anything, Toby? I'm trying to remember. I, I, I've i worked for a really, really, really long time, and I worked every single summer uh, since I was like probably 12 or 13. I worked for many things from working on a farm, driving tractors to hydraulic companies to washing window or cleaning windows uh you know that's all still in europe and when i moved here i was a busboy at a chinese restaurant because i was underage and that's the only way i could get <laughs> money is to work under under the table uh you know but i have to say at every job you either learn something or it got me money to get me the things i needed or wanted to get so yeah. i don't know how much there is to complain i mean Job is a job, you know. I yeah, worked yeah, yeah. at Sears in the shoe department. I worked at Foot Locker. I flirted at, you know, a, a carpet place where the owner really had me do video in the back for foosball instruction videos. What the heck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, he was random. actually really cool. I really liked him. He's friends with the comic book shop owner that I used to own the one down there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, I actually enjoyed his company quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I done just about... Almost every, I, you know, I worked in movies. I love that. Uh, I worked. Oh, I worked for the city for like two days, and I hated that. Wow. So there we go. I found one. Yeah, Sunnyvale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? I was uh, supposed to do an art program. I, I looked up it was like Saturday morning job, like you know, basically watch a couple kids uh, yeah. do do art. Yeah, uh, I hated it because you had to go to the, like some office and sign in there. And go to the place, take care of the kids, and that's basically a babysitting job, yeah, yeah. you know. And then, and then, and, and then you have to go back to sign out. And I was like, "This is the stupidest, most that's weird, non-efficient place ever." So I, you know, like you don't even have to pay me; I just won't be back anymore. And they, got, of course, were really mad at me, but <sighs> uh, yeah, that's, that's probably, weird. Yeah, that was the only place I actually walked away from because everything else I just did, yeah. you know. Uh, Got fired from one place, uh, you know, uh, that's comic books related. Quit the others. Yeah. But, you know, fuck it. Yeah, life sure. is life, man. Sure. I mean, like, if you don't like it, you walk away. Uh, question here from Brett. I worked at the Disney store. Did you really? Yeah. I didn't know In that. L.A. Oh, nice. well, yeah. So in L.A., uh, I when I was a grip, I was working for free for a long time. So I had to work during the day to make money to pay the rent. So I worked part-time at Best Buy. Uh, sorting movies, and the other part-time job was at the the Disney Play Store, uh, in in uh, by St. Gabriel, somewhere over that corner. And I would work from usually my shift was twelve to five, half days every day because I would go in a movie set at six to six in the morning, six p.m. till six a.m. Mm. And then I would grab me and Pac-Man would go get breakfast at this twenty-four hour place because for us it's dinner. Yeah. For everybody else, it's like you know it's six in the morning. We get dinner at 7 in the morning or 6.30 in the morning and have a few beers. We found a bar that opened at 8 in the morning and I would go sleep for like 4 hours and then go to my normal job that would pay the bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That sounds exhausting. Hey, got my foot in the door <laughs> and after that, I, actually that movie started paying me halfway through. They were like, we can't have this guy work for free anymore. Nice, so and nice. Ever since Finally. I had a paying job in the industry. So That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so Brady says, if someone... Who knew nothing about comics or superheroes asked you for a suggestion. What comic would you give them? I think that would be almost impossible these days because I'm sure everyone's heard of Batman and Superman by this point. (laughs) But those are kind of the characters I may lean towards a little bit more just because I think it would be – it would be almost impossible to find someone that doesn't at least have an idea of who they are. Um, Things like the – the uh, 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 Snyder Capullo run of Batman, I think, does a good enough job getting into their backstory and back history, mm-hmm. and is and is new reader friendly enough. I I normally tend to gravitate towards uh, Batman Hush, just because of the 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 character, all the different characters that are in that. I think um, Hush may be a little difficult if they've like if they know almost nothing because it's a very nostalgic book. Yeah, it's sort of like a best of and. You got to kind of art wise, it's very well, enticing. Oh, sure, sure. I guess for me, if they absolutely knew nothing, I would have to ask what other <laughs> yeah, stuff because, they do like. Well, yeah, yeah I probably wouldn't they recommend. They might not even like superheroes. Yeah, no, I'm just assuming they want a superhero stuff. Yeah, you know, well, I've, I get a lot of people in here that. But I mean, even then, depending on what their interests kind of mm-hmm. lean to, we could 
go from very serious takes on stuff to very lighthearted takes on stuff. Yeah, no, I, I've had people in that said that you know they just wanted a suggestion, but they don't really read a lot of comics. And and my first question is, what movies do you like? What TV shows do you like? Yeah. What books do you read? What music do you like? Because you just kind of like, okay, well, if you like this, then I have stuff that's kind of similar. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it, it 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 everybody has a different entrance to the comic book world. Yeah, be it you know Batman, be it Spider Man, be it some random independent book or Vertigo title. <laughs> You know, it's it, it's very difficult to say it, there's this absolute one thing that will get you into comics. Sure, sure. All right, we didn't really talk about this because uh, I just don't want to. But we can talk about it very briefly here. Does this have to do with politics? No. There's it has a- to do with uh, the, the Higgins versus uh, Bryce Larson um, MOS uh, commentary, doesn't it? No. Uh, Random rumor from who, who knows where. All these rumors so far have proven to be oh, false. The Batman. Yeah, all these rumors have pro- proven to be false, but another rumor popped up. I am Batman. That Ben Affleck may want to stop being Batman, that they're going to do Justice League, they're going to do the Batman movie, and then that may be his final movie. Again. Don't you love the internet? You know, oh, they said, oh, the Batman movie's doomed, ba- he, Affleck is not going to direct it, they're going to redo the entire script, we all hate it, and they're, Ben Affleck's like, no, I just, I'm busy, I got other stuff I want to do, I'm still going to be in it, the script's fine, the script's done, like, people, you're just making up shit. So, much like that, I, I believe, I don't see any reason that Affleck, I mean, you kind of know what you're getting into. If something comes up and Ben Affleck does want to leave and, and, and does his four or five movies, because what it would be, Batman be Superman, Suicide Squad, he'll probably be in Wonder Woman, Justice League, Batman. Uh, Batman. And then maybe if they kind of gain squeeze in for Justice League 2, that's five to six movies. That's... To me, I don't believe... I don't believe he's looking to get out of it before Justice League hits. Yeah. Like, it, well, it's, the it's, question it's, is... The question here is, if he does leave, what do they do? Do they recast, reboot? So... And that's sort of the question. Though. Personally, I think they have much bigger problems it, because... <laughs> The reaction to Ben Affleck as Batman was overly positive mm. when it came to Batman v Superman. And, like, his performance has not been shit canned by anyone that I've read. Generally, kind of yeah. Um, but if Justice League is not a good commercially viable success, basically, if each of these movies keeps being seen as a uh, failure even though as you point out it's really hard to qualify them as a failure 900 million bucks but that's failure oscar nominated but i mean Uh-oh. the fact of the matter is is at this point the hope is that all this criticism will turn to praise going forward with the next series of movies and i kind of feel like if anything he's probably getting frustrated with the quote-unquote hatred and haters out there but don't you think after Jennifer Lopez, he's over all that stuff and he's learned to like let go of the internet and not read in any of it? Well, but I, I think it's more along the lines of... After Jiggly, I think, can it get really what? anywhere? I well, think- no, but, but there's, there's an overall sense of you can only put out so many movies that are considered failures before it starts ne- negatively affecting your career. Well, I can see I don't think thinking- he's at any worry of that right now but i think it is the kind of thing where if the last 10 things on imdb page is all him playing batman and all generally considered a failure that would be worrisome yeah and it's worked uh, really hard to get his career back exactly so i don't think it's that he's saying i want out right now but yeah if the next few movies are not well received i could see it start well, then DC way. has a bigger problem at their hands than just and that's Netflix. that's my sort of take on it is if if the movies stop making money and the critics keep giving them super low score because I mean realistically right now there is an argument to be made that because this will be the first time we've had Batman Superman in a movie it would have made money either way because this is like I don't disagree with the fact that. They made money. They are considered like successes. But it's the same argument I have for Spider-Man 3 under the Raimi kind of thing. Is just because something makes money is not considered. It doesn't go down as a horrible misstep. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And while I do side with you in terms of liking Batman v Superman and all that, I do have to acknowledge the fact that as a actor, you need to hit that success at some point. You can't just be like, oh, everybody hates the oh, last no. 10 movies I did. No, no, no. I totally agree. I, I think that if Batman v Superman came out and was a, and was a success as far as uh, critical success, I don't think we'd be hearing probably much about Ben Affleck right now. I, I see this as probably one of two things. Either well, well. Besides the fact that it's probably total bullshit, um, I could see him saying, "Hey, you know, maybe I don't want to end up being stuck like Robert Downey Jr. doing this for fifteen years. Maybe I do want to kind of limit the amount of movies because it's, it's. I mean, if you're doing this full time, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of movies. Mm-hmm. You're you're filming a lot. You're yeah, heavily Iron involved. Man came out in and he wants six something like that. And you know, Affleck wants to do other stuff as well. So mm-hmm. maybe he's like, I actually thought I could, but I can't do this." Or it could just but, be a money thing. It could be like, hey, you know, you want me around. I, I made, you know, Robert Downey Jr. pulled the same shit. Where he's like, oh, I don't know. Maybe I won't stick around. So I could very easily see Ben Affleck going, you know, look, if I'm going to put a decade of my life into this, I really need to get paid more, yeah. depending on, mm. you know, what they're going to do with it. But Honestly, I, I'm amazed at how much he's doing while doing all oh, this i mean he's still putting out other movies i know and that's why i'm thinking yeah. that it may just be the case of hey look if i'm gonna really sink into this deep you gotta pay me on the other movies he does a lot more yeah yeah but is the, the question for a recast or reboot to me no there's no reason to reboot just keep going because you're gonna start you've already lost people at marvel right i mean you lost hulk and they replaced them um you're gonna lose more people as time goes on in the marvel movies well, let's just say you know how many people grown at the uh, growing gro- I don't know. Anyway, how many people uh, kind of uh, negatively uh, responded to the Spider-Man trailer? Because in the movie theater, the Lego Batman, the Spider-Man trailer was on again. Yeah. And there's a lot of grown-ups. Not, not the kids. The kids probably excited anyway, either way. But a lot of grown-ups, I can hear them behind me going, another one? <laughs> right? So even though this is like, I almost want to run, but this is in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. I'll be a total nerd about it. But but you can cool. take the normals are like, another one? They're... They're tired of these reboots and Boy, reduce. We talked about the Spider-Man trailer yeah. here. I thought that trailer. Well, was fuck a you, giant dud. Like, uh, you, uh, well, you're a giant dud. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next question. But yeah, no, Affleck. Uh, hopefully, hopefully he's not leaving. Uh, let's see. All right, here's some, another one from Brady. He says, pick one current Marvel rebirth. Or sorry, sorry, <laughs> one current Marvel character that isn't the classic version keep through the eventual rebirth and i mean i have i have two it's very easy it's the only two successful ones it's it's miles morales and and uh, miss marvel it i mean those are the two that i don't mind that they're trying other characters but those two have shown a success uh be i mean obviously obviously miles morales hasn't come from this recent line of stuff but they brought him in and miss marvel has been you know while the numbers are down uh she is super popular she is the kind of poster child for that uh uh, success that marvel's had with these characters uh Mm -hmm. just not 30 of them and those would be the two that i keep uh i don't necessarily need those characters to go away and i i also don't need most of these characters to go away they just don't need their own comics that's the difference yeah i mean done you said it all we don't (laughs) have to repeat what you just said i don't know I guess my thing is, at least currently, it's like Old Man Logan I would definitely keep, even though he's barely sort of new blood. I mean, I like Jane Foster as Thor. I like Jane Foster as Thor, but there's there's that question of, does that mean we don't get the classic Thor back? Yeah, I mean, I don't... It, it just... Because it, it, it's, it's a weird scenario especially the wording because if you're talking about sort of characters that have replaced classic characters meaning keep the new version versus the old version that phrases the question a little different to me like it becomes a do you keep riri williams or do you go back to tony stark do you keep you keep both jane foster or do you go back to Odinson. Yeah. Um, Go back to Odinson. Well, and here's the thing. Yeah. I think Miles Morales being another Spider-Man doesn't affect Peter Parker very exactly. much. Exactly. No. Cap- Miss Marvel getting the bump to Captain Marvel, and you have a new Miss Marvel. That yeah. that is perfectly fine, right? But I don't need this Wasp 
when Janet Van Dyne's sitting right there. I don't need. I, I like I like Jane Foster Thor a ton, but you could bring back Thor. I don't need Falcon to be Cap when Cap is right there. Yeah. Right, yeah. all these changes uh, you just don't need. Well, you know they're going to force Gwenpool through, so. And fuck. God, if there's... <laughs> if there's if anything. Superboy Prime could rip the arm off of anyone in the Marvel Universe and beat them to death with it, it would be Gwenpool. Okay, I hate Superboy Prime, but I would watch that Superboy happen. Superboy Prime is the I, w- I would buy that. That's I would buy who that needs book. to come back as part of DC Rebirth of Superboy oh, dear Prime. God. DC, we'll, let me we'll, write a Superboy Prime comic for you, please. I'm just too busy thinking of, about you going to your wife and being like, do you know what I need you to draw for me so I can put up in the shop? <laughs> Not a question, but our good friend Darfox8 over from the uh, I'll Talk podcast. He says, while everyone is freaking out about Ben Affleck, I'm just thinking Justice League trailer must be soon. Justice League yeah. trailer must be soon. Gal Gadot actually said that uh, we are potentially days away from the Justice League trailer. Nice. So odds are it drops Thursday because I'm not at work, and that's when this shit always happens. Yeah. It happens when I'm not at work for some reason, and I'm distracted Can by like other things. Can you, not be at work tomorrow, then? It's going <laughs> to drop. <laughs> Justice League trailer drops Thursday. That's that's my call, because that's when these things happen. I just want the, I just want the Last Jedi trailer to drop. you got a while for that. That won't be till summer. We, you'll get a teaser or something, but we, they won't we drop. Be, well, we should be getting something soon. They won't drop the it's floor. only like 300 days care. away. I'm going to show up for that one either way. Oh, yeah, sure, of course, of course. All right, here's a great question from Samurai Godzilla on Twitter. He asks, who would you have on a suicide, a suicide squad type team of Marvel villains? And not just anti-heroes like the Thunderbolts. Although the Thunderbolts are all straight up villains. I mean, less so these days. But but who do you want on your suicide squad Marvel team? Hmm. Isn't that the Thunderbolts? <laughs> what I just said, he said, not the anti heroes like the Thunderbolts. Oh, although, the, although I then argued no, like, to myself like that the Thunderbolts act, are like actually locked up criminals. Like, yeah, the Thunderbolts are, 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 are not either heroes nor villains at this point. I mean, I think you just got on the gallery of Spider Man villains because those guys are all. I mean, this, this, this the sinister, uh, this, or this, the what the hell is it called? The six? Sinister Six would just make a pretty decent starter Suicide Squad. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like it's going to be a lot of Spider-Man villains coming in here because I think you get a lot of the. Well, I think that I, I think that the the difference is, is is well, where do you go with it? Do you get this kind of humorous Suicide Squad vein, or do you, you go want? with a more kind of serious kind of evil? Well, why don't we go I mean, one if, for one if, replacements? If, why don't we go? Okay, so Deadshot's Bullseye. Yeah, Deadshot's Bullseye. Okay. Uh, let's, let's go like, let's go like more recent squad then. Oh no, let's go classic squad. Let's go classic squad. Um, you just don't want to find out who's replacing Harley Quinn. So Captain Boomerang, <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't Captain Boomerang that. would be Boomerang. Boomerang. Okay. So there yeah. you go. That's two. Uh, why but, is it starting to sound like the superior foes of ba- Daredevil it, that's, slash That's Spider-Man. exactly what it would be. Yeah. Right. Uh, who would be Rick Flag? Ooh. Who's a good Rick Flag? Oh, who's the, who's the dipshit no. in Hulk that's like... Always, Jones? No, the one that's always like the military guy that's underneath Ross. Thaddeus? Yeah. He's not like Barnes. Uh you know, soldier? Eh. Yeah. Frank Castle? No, nah, he said Punisher. No. Punisher yeah. no. Punisher wouldn't work. Not on the squad. Or didn't uh, the sidekick of uh the Hulk, wasn't that a Jones? Rick Jones, yeah. Jones. That's oh. what I just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, no, but Jones is not military. Uh, I don't know that you really get a good military Sam Wilson? Well, you know it's no. going to be like Fury. Well, you could go the kid? Fury. The black kid? It yeah. could be the kid. Yeah. It could be the kid. I'll give you that. Okay. Um, who's Enchantress? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it's that, that Thor uh, girl with the green shit. The Enchantress? The Enchantress. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Done! <laughs> but she's like... She's, God, very like she's like a god. Yeah. It's slightly different. So was the one in the movie! Kind of. Is there like an evil Scarlet Witch? Scarlet Witch? Yeah, 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 that's true, that's true, that's true. So, we're, so are we doing evil Scarlet Witch? Wait, wasn't there a, Enchantress? a, wasn't there a Enchantress kind of lady in Iron Man when he went back in time with Doctor Doom? That's the Enchantress. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it's the same character. I keep going I, to the I same believe, characters. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure. Ooh, that's let me uh, let me see how many times I can remember these characters <laughs> the, in different ways. The same character. <laughs> uh, who else? Who else is on the the OG squad? Um, 
God, who am I? Who am I forgetting? Those are kind of some. Those are kind of the big ones. Oh, who's Waller? Who leads the team? Who leads yeah. Marvel Suicide Squad? That's a tough question. Madame Web. No. no. <laughs> I hate, have I ever told you how much I hate <laughs> Madam Web? Oh, I hate her too. I don't oh know. my god! I that entire part of well, Spider Man okay, Ma- I despise. Ma- Ma- Maria Hill's on her way out from Shield. I'm too busy just going. You just put the oh more current Professor X in that role, and he'll just mind fuck everybody mm-hmm. to do the missions. And oh no, Ryan's got no. Oh, of- it's um uh, Abigail Brand. That's who it is. She oh, already the, did. The, 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 she basically the the, the sh- green herd sh- sword. from sword. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This totally Abigail Brand. Yeah, she kind of already did lead this. Okay, no, no. Uh, but, can I would like to throw uh, what that Bloodstone chick on there? Oh, um, yeah. She's from good. from from what's her call? From um, yeah. um from uh, Next Wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's her? Hey, Ava? you could have Ava? Black Knight be the be a uh, Rick Flag. Mm. No, he's the katana. No, but he's a good guy, so he's Rick Flag. That's the Katana, yeah. yeah. All right, so who would we replace with Harley Quinn then? Nah, Harley's Harley's. Oh, the... Katana's Electra. Uh, yeah, is... that could work. But I oh, you see know, Electra you know, working no, no, with a... no, no, no. You know who they would replace Harley with? Gwenpool. That's who they would replace Harley with. Yeah, they, yes, they we would. We were trying to avoid that one since the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I was. That's pretty I much where he. Didn't went want to, to go. OG and yeah. I just like, yeah, not- <laughs> if he didn't cut on, that's where he switched. Oh, I don't care. All right, next question. All right, let's see. Um, For our basically the same name, Suicide Squad. Squad. Magneto. Yeah. Doctor Doctor Polaris in the Suicide Squad. I think he was. Yeah. I not, wasn't Doctor Polaris in the squad? Yeah, I mean, he was no, in this he, more recent. He was in the original team. He was, he was in this more recent the new stuff. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's from Danny. He says, uh, Injustice 2 just announced Swamp Thing is going to be in the game. My excitement went through the roof. Anyone else looking forward to this game? I'm looking forward to it, but I don't play fighting games. I'm terrible at them. So I will be very excited to watch the movie on YouTube. Yeah. And kind of. <laughs> I love fighting it. games, and I'm terrible at them, and I collect them, and I haven't even played the first time yet. I played the first one. It was a waste of money. So. I. Like playing through the first one in the story. I didn't mind playing through it, but I felt like the amount of because I bought it when it first came out. I'm like, I would have much rather spent like twenty bucks on it. All the tiny games, probably very realistically. I I admit, so I bought it when it first came out, played through it, enjoyed it, played it a little bit past that, and then got really really excited when it went on to like PlayStation Plus for a month, so I could get all the extra characters for free. Yeah, I put the game on like super easy and just played it. Yeah. And just watch the cutscenes, and and <laughs> I didn't realize I spent sixty dollars on this game, and I could have just watched it on YouTube for free. So yeah. I probably will if we'll just do it that way. I mean, I mean the 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 story in Injustice is great; it's yeah. super yeah. cool. And that the the I mean, I haven't stayed current with the comics, but that original run of Injustice comics was really good too. Yeah, tying into I never the, into the, the game. Yeah, but I did love the uh, I, I love the animation they have in that game. So yeah. All right, uh, I think that's it. That is going to do it for us. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this another episode of the Comic Conspiracy Podcast. This, this Valentine's Day episode, yes, yes. Hopefully, you're. Are you uh, mad? Am I mad? Yeah. Mad at what? Bryce chose his wife over you. No, no. He no, is no, the Joker fine. to your bat. Uh, <sighs> who's the Joker? Who's the Batman? Oh, Bryce, Joker. <laughs> no question, Bryce is the Joker. Um, yeah, but which Batman are you? Uh, I don't know. 66. 66. There you go. <laughs> Doing the Batutsi? Yeah, dude. He's um, in the club all the time. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know that I, I mentioned this on Twitter. I may have talked about this in the podcast so forever ago. Batman Club? Yeah. Have we talked about that here? Ago, yeah. yeah. Is it still open to no, 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 no. It opened in the 60s for like a year. Yeah. Oh, can we reopen it? Should. I want to. Yeah, let's do it. I, so years ago when we were getting I ready I got to, bouncing experience and bartending experience. When, when I was first DJing. And I was looking for the night, the name of our night. That so, there's an old golf club, one of the actually the original golf club that ever opened in England. It was called the Bat Cave. <laughs> but I was like, that's just too on the nose. I was this close to trying to call the night Arkham Asylum, but I just figured like eh, that might be that just doesn't maybe doesn't quite ring yeah. quite right. So yeah, because it's just the Asylum, the Asylum. I, th- I think there's like twelve clubs called the Asylum. Oh. So yeah. Are we really reopening the Batman Club? We should, though. That'd be amazing. I'll, I'll, I'll contact uh, DC and be like, hey, can we do this for one night? It'd be the coolest thing ever. That'd be 
Yeah. <laughs> you should. Well, we have to thank our good friends at Patreon here. Uh, Albert Soy. He's got that app on iTunes. It's called Plant Ever. Make sure you uh, check that out. Julian Titus, Nerds of the Pants podcast. No pants. At Pixelbit.com. And I'm talking to Julian. He may be swinging out this way pretty soon. So. Hopefully with pants. No, hope. I hope with no We're, pants. We, we are, we'll he not, has to be true to his word. He can't have no fucking pants on. None of us. In solidarity. See, this is where you can't meet your heroes. If he fucking shows up and has pants on, I'd be so disappointed. In solidarity, we will all not wear pants when he's here. Yes. So. Uh, I'm keeping my pants. <laughs> oh, I'm we got these nice windows here in the front of the store. Yeah. No pants. Yeah. So Wait, didn't 21 pilots accept their uh, Grammy with no pants? I don't know. I think they did. They were like they said so. Like when we were, when, I, I could be totally wrong, but I, I thought they did. Ryan Hess, he's got that Preach podcast. SoundCloud.com slash Preach podcast. Check those guys out. Jody Lawson also has Can in the Triad Comics anthology at TriadComicStudios.com. You can go check their books out there. Make sure we order something from them. Also, Manoa plays Sam Che, Tal, uh, Talon Bray, and Craig Anderson. Thank you guys all very, very much. Craig Anderson. Yeah, that's him. so familiar. Mr. Anderson. Um, <laughs> thank you all very, very much for your continued donation through Patreon. That's patreon.com slash comic conspiracy. And again, if you want to get your name on our list or uh, um, just, just kick us a few Access bucks. Access to, to the Bryce Briefleys and the Roundups. Yep, yep. Those are all on there. Toby, where the fuck's the... No! <laughs> Apparently, there's supposed to be some new roundups. I got but like two roundups. Toby that... has forgotten to give them to Ryan. Toby has given me some. Comicspiracypodcast.com, geekbox.net, and iTunes. That's where you can find this podcast and all our previous episodes. Make sure you rate and review us on iTunes. Please help other people find the podcast. Uh, if you got any long, long form questions, you can send them to us at the comic conspiracy at geekbox.net. Uh, if you are interested in buying some digital comics, they go on your computer and your iPhone and your <laughs> iPad and all your devices through Comixology. <laughs> You can buy them through us at the comic book store at mm-hmm. digital.comicsconspiracy.biz. Or if you just go to our website, you can find it there on the front page. There's a link. Uh, all your new releases are up there every single week. Tons of great sales. If you subscribe, you never have to go back to the site. You just get the book every time a new issue comes out. And we get – if you subscribe get, on the computer, we get the, the – Yeah, if you, yeah. Get a subscri- if you get a subscription through our website, we get that cut every time mm-hmm. um, again without you having to go back. So definitely check that out if you want to support the store and read your comics digitally. Mm-hmm. A lot of people do that. If you, uh, if you want to support the store, you can also contact us via email or phone yep, to see yep. if we can mail things out to you. Yep, we do lots of special orders. We have a bunch of our uh, listeners that get uh, mail order uh, monthly subscriptions, too, which we can set up here if you get books on a regular basis but uh, can't make it to your local comic shop and uh, want to get them through us. Mm-hmm. We can send that out. Brock expertly packs them every month uh-huh. and sends them out. Stefano can uh, attest to that. Yep, he's got some, some big boxes. Mm-hmm. Com- uh, sorry, conspiratorbrock.com. That's Brock's video pull list and blog. Wander is in the fourth dimension. That's Charlie's Doctor Who podcast. And I understand Charlie is going to Gallifrey. Charlie, when, do you, when are you doing an episode based on that? Oh, we will definitely talk about it in an episode. Okay. So uh, Charlie's going to talk about doing an episode. Yeah, they're doing Gallifrey on the big Doctor Who convention in Los Angeles. Uh, so he's going to be talking about that in an upcoming episode. That's when? That's soon, right? That's this weekend, so if you're down there, find Charlie. Find the tallest man in the room <laughs> and ask him if he's Charlie from the Comic Conspiracy and, Podcast. And if he is, take a picture with him and post it on, yeah, and, on uh, the social networks. And then if you want to just listen to the Wanderers in the Fourth Dimension Podcast, you can, talk, you can hear him talk about uh, Gallifrey One in a couple weeks. Also, Etsy.com slash shop slash Leanne Hill Art. That is uh, my wife, Leanne. We Which had a wonderful... She might have a new commission of Superboy Prime beating the shit out of Gwen, Gwenpool with her own arms. We had a wonderful Valentine's Day on Sunday, which is why I'm here tonight, because we have jobs. And so uh, I'm not like Bryce try- backing out, doing it on the actual day. Like, you know, it's a, a Valentine's Day is whatever day you celebrate. I don't know about you, heart. but I think to- Toby and I are celebrating, what, Singles Day? Right? It's the oh, best day. No. <laughs> I celebrate Singles Day every day. Oh, okay. Toby's a big fan of Valentine's Day, so. What the hell is Valentine's? It's uh, Valentine's for girls. Excellent. I'm for it. <laughs> Ryan Higgins, Ryan. That's me. I'm on Twitter. You can add me there, please. Brock Sager is Brock Sager. Larson Bryce is Bryce Larson. Wait. Bryce Larson is Larson <laughs> Bryce. I don't know well, who Bryce Larson is on Twitter. They're probably not named Larson Bryce in real life. But if you add Larson Bryce, you're adding Bryce Larson. Not confusing at all. Toby is Toby XI. Charlie's Insanity and Chaos, his real name. Comics Con uh, Store. Comics Con Store, that is the name of the store. 
uh, on Twitter. You can add us. I talk about comic books. They're not politics oh, you do whatsoever. Have the, you do have the pre-order up, though, for... Um, oh, yeah. this cover. I just pulled the regular cover for Nightwing because I pulled whatever okay, the regular what we're book talking is. About here. Um, if you want, uh, we have two pre-orders up for right now on our site. We have the Image Comics Women's History Month with a uh, all the proceeds from Image Comics and $5 from every set you order through us going to Planned Parenthood. They're going mm-hmm. to the National Planned Parenthood. Uh, that's so, so, for the, so the store month. is doing in addition. So we're in taking, addition. Okay. okay. Yep. And then uh, we also have the Flash Batman crossover, The Button, that's out in April and May. April, April and May, I believe. Uh, I believe – or is it, is it March? No, it's April and May. Uh, it's a four-part crossover, Flash and Batman, four issues, lenticular cover. The little the covers are good. And they look the shiny. They look a they look lot awesome. better now. They look awesome. Yeah. We are doing two different sets. We're doing the one set that has all four of the lenticular covers for the full crossover. This is that Watchmen crossover thing they're doing between Flash and Batman. We also have a second set that comes with not only the standard cover, also the lenticular cover, as well as the international cover. They cannot use the Smiley Face logo internationally. So oh, wow, there really? is something else that they're going to have instead. Hmm. So we're going to be getting all three covers. Uh, and if you want to pre-order that set, those are available at comicsconspiracy.biz. Don't forget to listen to the Geek Box. We had a little two-man cast. This week, just me and Ryan Scott talking about uh, probably just mostly Nintendo. I don't remember. I think it, you just switched it out. Yeah. yeah well, I, oh, that's, oh, God, the switch is so soon. Uh, it's like, it's like a, two weeks. <sighs> Tune, tune change, yeah. Comedy Button, Good Job Brain, All Talk Podcast, and Manga Machinations. I was just on the All Talk Podcast uh, episode, just gone up fairly recently, for their fifth anniversary episode. So check that out, All Talk Podcast. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And um, no, 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 uh, Brock's no. got something. Uh, I would like everybody to um, send Ryan uh, um, ideas for what we should be doing for our 300th episode. I told you, Todd McFarlane's is... going to start drawing us, and we're going <laughs> to someone's going to someone's going to start wearing all black. Hint, it's me. Yeah, you already wear. And all black. Uh, yeah, there you go, 300 so, episodes. So send us your ideas for what you guys want us to do for our 300th episode, which is in what two weeks? Not close. Two, no, three weeks? this is ninety. This is ninety. What so ninety seven? And eight and nine. Three weeks. Yeah, three yeah. weeks sounds good. Yeah, we're going to record an episode of the Comic Conspiracy Podcast. How does that sound? You're a dumbass. No, I'm perfectly great.